Anyone who has played pickleball knows how it feels to be inconsistent. One day you may play amazing and the next day you may struggle to get the ball over the net. This can be extremely frustrating. Today, we're gonna to cover why inconsistency happens and what you can do to stop it. With these tips, not only will you eliminate unforced errors, but you'll unlock a new way to play at a higher level. Let's get into it. Welcome to High Five Pickleball, where we help you play better, win more, and make the most of your time on the court. My name is Adam Richards, and today we're covering a few ways you can be more consistent. One thing that separates good players from great ones is consistency. And one of the main reasons why they are so consistent is because they make fewer unforced errors than their opponents. An unforced error is a missed shot or a lost point that is due to your own mistake, not because of your opponent's skill. The keys to consistency are understanding why you commit unforced errors and then overcoming those unforced errors by using smart and repeatable mechanics and processes. In this video, we'll start with the mindset and then dive into the practical and tactical. So be sure to watch until the end. But before we do that, I want to give you a free gift. It's called the Path to Better Pickleball. If you're looking for an easy step-by-step -step approach to improving your game, this is for you. This is a 30-day challenge focused on the 10 important skills every player needs to know, and it's designed in such a way that you can build on your skills every step of the way. After signing up, you get a free downloadable skills guide and 10 step-by-step -step videos sent straight to your inbox every few days. I'm happy to say that over a thousand pickleballers have joined so far, and I've gotten some positive feedback. So if you want to gain free access, just click the link in the description. All right, let's get into it. Whether you're playing a tournament or a recreation game, it can be tempting to think you have to hit every shot perfectly. But the reality is, it's impossible to be perfect on a repeatable basis. While it's good to strive for perfection, it's better to use something like the 80% rule and choose shots that you can repeat eight times out of 10. For example, if you have the option between two shots in a rally and one is an 80% success rate and the other is a 40%, choose the higher percentage one. Over the course of a game, these decisions will add up and pay off. Patience is power in pickleball because when you're patient, you're less likely to force a shot you shouldn't take. Many people will say to wait for your opponent to make a mistake, but this type of passive patience is only one part of the equation. Instead, consider using active patience where you construct points by playing smart, consistent shots that put stress on your opponent with the intention that when the window of opportunity opens, you can take advantage. If you want to practice being patient, here are a few things you can try the next time you play. Only attack balls above your waist. Learn how to relax. Take a deep breath and notice your internal chatter. For example, have you chosen to lose the game in your mind before the first serve? Does one error in a game completely throw you off and send you into a tailspin? Lastly, remember to give yourself some grace. Like I said earlier, nobody is perfect and it takes time to develop your game. You're never finished in your development. So give yourself and other people grace. Now let's get into some repeatable mechanics that can help you play with more consistency. One of the most underrated skills in pickleball is the ability to see the ball and to anticipate it throughout a point. Many players who struggle with consistency will break eye contact with the ball before hitting the ball. If you struggle with mishits, timing, or making clean contact, try watching the ball all the way to your paddle to the contact point. Another way you can improve your focus on the ball at the net is to minimize your head movement. The more you move your head, the more likely your vision will blur. So keep your head still. 
Many players who struggle with inconsistency tend to use too much wrist or arm in their shots, or they have extra large backswings. Instead, you want to minimize that unnecessary movement. This means you will have compact swings and you will use your shoulder as the primary director of motion. By using your shoulder, your swings will be stable, smooth, and controlled, and this pendulum swing motion is much easier to repeat consistently. Another common temptation that can lead to inconsistency is to aim for the sidelines, the baselines, or to try to paint the lines with your shots. Instead, you want to shrink the court and aim two to three feet in. You don't have to go for the lines or the low percentage areas to hit a winner. In order to be consistent, you must respect the net and give plenty of margin for error in your shots. If you consistently hit the top part of the net, try adding an extra six inches or a foot. And if you're struggling with a particular shot or maybe one day you're not playing as well, aim high. An error over the net is better than one in the net. One easy way to hit repeatable, consistent shots is to keep the ball out front in your optimal contact zone. No matter where you are on the court, this is a good habit that leads to easier shots and higher success rates. You'll want to keep the ball from getting behind you at all costs because this can lead to pop-ups or errors. Footwork is critical to consistency, but too many unnecessary steps can throw you off balance and lead to mistakes. One common error I see often is players who move their feet while they swing or they run through the ball, especially in the transition zone. Instead, you want to beat the ball to the spot, set your feet, and swing. If you'd like to learn more about smart footwork like the split step, I'll leave a link in the description. If you want to add more consistency to your game, it's important to learn how to drill and to build muscle memory for different shots. One drill that can help highlight unforced errors is to play a game where instead of tracking points, you count the number of unforced errors. The team that gets to 11 unforced errors first loses. Which tip was most useful for you? Let me know in the comments. Your feedback will help me make better videos in the future. And as always, if you enjoyed this content or learned something new, please remember to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you never miss another update from High Five Pickleball. Thanks for watching.